uh, well, it's the first vlog back in uh, back in Manila, and I'm not even in Manila. I'm in uh, Malolos in Bulacan in a restaurant called Christine's with the fabulous Chef Jean Gonzalez, and I'm just about to have my first mango duet. Oh, yum! Just alternating layers of ripe and unripe mango. Oh yeah. All right, and so I'm with Chef Jean Gonzalez, and Jean has organized this. Uh, and this food he describes as being Filipino progressive. And so what I need to know is, what's progressive? What does well, it mean? Progressive Filipino does not veer away from traditional ingredients or techniques. Yep. Everything is there from adobo, sinigang, anyhow. But the, the flavors are now progressively matched. There, there are new flavors that are introduced into right. the, without veering away and calling it fusion. It's still uh, Filipino. The flavors are still very Filipino. So it's a contemporary take yes. on traditional Filipino Correct. food. Would that be a way of explaining uh -huh. it? Right, okay, yeah. that's interesting. Right. So, right. But so well, what, what have we got here? Well, what, for, what's this one? This one. This here. one is called. This looks beautiful. <laughs> all, all the drinking places, all the street food types have a version of dinamitas, which is basically chili and cheese. But we added. It's dynamite. Yeah. We added. Uh, we added smoked fish tinapa, and we decided to serve it with a. Uh, infused mango mayonnaise and some salsa okay so this is the infused mango mayonnaise so what what this is in in lay person's terms is a green chili that's been cut open and stuffed with a smoked fish and cheese and then cheese and then wrapped in this spring roll wrapper and deep fried and then we've got this Infused, what, what, the infused mayonnaise, is it? Mm. With garlic and mango. Garlic and mango infused mayonnaise. So this should be reasonably spicy hot. And then you can take a little bit of salsa. Yes. Oh, give it a freshness. I think I'll do it this way. Oh, that's nice. Mm. Oh wow, you get the smoked fish, the spiciness, and then the freshness of the salsa. A little bit of garlic. Can't really taste the mango in the mayonnaise. So our next entree looks like a plate of ordinary fried shrimp. But the, the shrimp was infused with gin. Infused and, with gin. And, and, and aromatics. And, and what's the name? Nila Sing Nahipon, Drunken Shrimp. <laughs> so this is Drunken Shrimp. All right, we'll just have Try one. it first without the infused uh, vinegar. Okay. So you see the back flavors of mm. the, the, the aroma and the spices. And it's salty and, of course, shrimpy. Mm -hmm. And then there are these, these undertones of other flavors that I couldn't, if you hadn't told me, I wouldn't really be able to put my finger on exactly what they are, but they're good. And this is the infused vinegar. Yeah, nice. nice a touch. little heat, mm. a little sweetness, sour. Yeah. Mm hmm. Oh, this is this is our next one. Are, are we still on um, entree? Um, well, these are just appetizers. Yeah, we're gonna have our entrees later. Oh, okay. But so this is this is an appetizer. Well, well, it's a starter. It's a soup. Um, it's in the Philippines to cook it with ginger. A soup that's boiled with ginger is called tinola. Oh, okay, tinola. So, we, you know, tinola is a very uh, ordinary, um, very common with, with some fish sauce. But this clam 
was infused with some pineapple. Oh, right. To give it a higher umami, give it a roundness, you know, for sweetness and all that. Okay, so it's, a, it's a, a, essentially, it's a little bit like a, a pineapple tinola. Oh, that's nice. Okay, so let's... Thank and you. because Bulacan is a coastal area, it, it's where the river meets the sea, you can get a lot of seafood. That's why we're gonna have uh, a few more items. There you go. A bit more seafood later. Mm -hmm. And Bulacan is also a producer of good vegetables, so, you know, got some nice, uh, you know, tomatoes are, are good, and it's mm. summer. Oh. Mm. A chunk of pineapple with some onion. All right, we're flying. We're flying through this. I'll take these off. This is the next course. This is entree. This one is particularly beautiful. It's just so beautifully presented. But what is it? This is Crispy Oyster Santa Ana, named after the owner of the place who... Right. who uh, he trades in seafood. Right. And uh, Bulacan is also famous for its oysters because it's where river meets the sea. Yeah, right. So how do we eat this? So this is a crispy oyster glazed in a sweet sour glaze. And uh, you have a slice of calamansi on top. So you take everything, even that raw slice of calamansi, to get the full oyster briny so you experience. You put the whole thing in yes. your mouth. Sweet sour, well, well partially they're kind of huge so they are pretty big yeah. but when you say crispy th this has been it's fried it's fried and then it's glaze a sweet sour glaze with tamarind and tomato and here we go <laughs> it's all it's everything going on at once. The crispiness and the oyster, the calamansi. Oh. Oh, yum. Really, so really much really going nice. on, right? Mm. Yeah. So this is progressive Filipino food. It doesn't veer away from traditional flavors and ingredients, but uh, it's just a bit of a, an artistic touch-up. Let's move straight along. What's what's this one? This is pandan pinipig prawns. The prawns are marinated in pandan uh, custard and coated with pinipig. Co coated with pinipig, which young is young green rice, unripe rice, unripened rice. So this is puffed, which is fried. Yes, and you get a lot of uh, how would you call it? Uh, greeny, reedy flavors. Mm. Quite round, mm. and it, it works well with the with the sh with the prawns. And organic, yeah. All right. So how do we eat this one? Yeah, just uh, you just grab it. Go straight away like this. Mm. Wow. And nice and messy. Mm. Oh. What did you call the rice? This, the is, this rice? is inspired from the Singaporean cereal prawn, but uh, we wanted to create a version of this. We wanted Filipino, a Filipino uh, flavor and grain. So Chef so James is on the menu. Oh, this is lovely. Beautiful, big, fat, tasty shrimps. Oh, that is delicious. Oh. But these, these oysters are just such an award-winning presentation. They're sensational. Wow. All right, we're going to move on. We're keeping well, moving. And our main course is 
Well, we have uh, baked bangus, boneless. Uh, so the milk fish is uh, is topped with cheese and uh, <laughs> abanan talangka crab fat. Oh, the crab fat, yes. With the alava. Uh, well, crab fat, and then served with some pickled cabbage. Oh, right, some pickled cabbage here. And that's interesting. All right. Well, would you? Well, um, this this you try it first uh, on naturel because it's loaded with garlic too. But uh, you'll need some rice for this because it it really packs a punch. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Well, we've got our rice here. So we the the it's very common in Central Luzon to wrap the rice in young banana leaf, and you you get all the those wonderful uh, reedy natural flavors. It's also an ancient way of packaging to prevent rice from spoiling. Right. Yeah. And so this is boneless. Yes. Wow. So you can come in and dig and, you know, highlight. I'll, I'll put a little on the... more crab fat on the... Oh, you got the nice part, huh? <laughs> you got the... That's good. You, you you have a portion of that fatty stomach. Yeah. yeah. All right. So the, the crab fat and the cheese um, gives uh, an even creamier flavor to an otherwise... Um, uh, how would you call it? Very fine textured fish like bangus. Right. And um, it also, um, how would you call it? It brings up the, the cleaner river flavors, the sweet water flavors of the fish. So this is a fresh water fish? It's a brackish uh, water. Oh. The grilled cheese on top is, oh, it's delicious. There's kind of robust flavors and delicate flavors as well. It's the sort of thing that you can roll around the palate and keep discovering another flavor, another layer of flavors. We're, we're having this with some vegetables. Well, this vegetable and crispy pork. But the crispy pork is glazed with our uh, shrimp, shrimp fry, bagoong, fermented shrimp paste. And uh, all, all, all Asian cultures have a form of shrimp paste. This is our version, but we, we do just a very light, very thin. It's not so strong. Yes. It's not so knock you out strong. Mm. And so this is like a, a lechon kualai. Yes. So it's a deep, deep fried you, pork. Why don't you take this? this uh, and then try it with the... Wing beans, Just getting some egg grain. Yeah. There's some tomato in there, and the beans. I think it's some, it's something that Westerners might find a little bit odd at first, that you've got a fishy taste to the exterior of a piece of pork, mm. but then you throw it in with all of these other influences. and it becomes something else. Back to the fish. Oh. This is beautiful. Actually, I don't, I might have some eggplant. Mm. It's something that grows on you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But <clears throat> holistically, the menu is very interesting. And if you want to get out of Manila, it's only, like Jean was saying, 35 minutes out. And you do feel like you're away. And you can come to this gorgeous place. So you're doing a bit of traveling? Well, yeah. We'll be uh, going to Davao next week and then also to Vietnam. Um, Bangkok. 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 I'm going to Zamboanga in four or five days. And then Tawi Tawi. Hopefully, Polo in Sulu. 
Hot I'm looking forward for you uh, to try some of the family recipes of Tak. Tak is Muhammad. Yeah. <coughs> who was a Taosug chef who showed me, who introduced me to Taosug food in Zamboanga, and his family has a restaurant in Holo in Sulu. And that's what Chef Jean's talking about. The family restaurant's got an extremely good reputation. Uh, so hopefully I'll get to have dinner or something there when I go there. Because I'll be going to Sulu, Holo in Sulu, with Muhammad. This is dessert. Now this looks like a creme brulee to me. Mm -hmm. And it just looks like ice cream, maybe a vanilla ice cream, maybe a mango ice cream, but what have we got? Okay, this, uh, this uh, creme brulee type uh, in Spanish is called natilla. And this natilla is infused with ginger tea. Ginger tea? Yes. Go ahead. Try the... Do we try it without the ice cream or...? Uh, try it without the ice cream. So it's been prepared like a creme brulee. Yes. Because Filipinos love egg yolk based desserts like flans and custards. So we decided to... Uh... Oh! Well, not what I was expecting. Yeah, it's got that tea flavor. Just that little light with the ginger, the burnt the sugar fragrance. on top. Uh -huh. And the egg custody texture. Wow. All right, so what's this? So this is salted egg ice cream. Maalat na itlog ice cream. And the salted, salted preserved egg. eggs. You will have a lot of umami, a lot of uh, really tasty, a uh, very tasty experience with this. It's more of a textural thing. Uh -huh. But what else is in there? I can see other things in well, there. Well, uh, how would you call it? Toasted toasted mamon or toasted cake but basically it's really a toasted cake yeah um, you know and did you say this chicharron yeah oh this one oh okay we'll do that one later yeah. we'll do that one later so this has got some sort of cake in it mm. and it's a salted egg what's that other flavor There's something else I can taste in there so it's, it really crosses over the boundary of sweet and savory. Mm. You have the fermented egg. Oh, that's, that's really nice. It is. A, it's like a savory ice cream. All right, okay, so now this is this one. beer and pollutant ice cream. So when you're drinking beer, you're having nuts and chicharron, and they put it all in an ice cream. So beer and peanut ice cream. Peanut and chicharron, pork rind. And chicharron, which is a... It's a... Savory. It's, it's a, a deep fried pork skin. Pork skin, yeah. A pork ice cream. <laughs> I can taste the beer. Is it a San Miguel light? Mm. Now, quite often with ice cream flavors, especially when they become complex, you sort of go, mm, yeah, I don't know, it all comes together as something else. But this, you can taste the peanuts and you can definitely taste the beer. Yeah, and a little pork rind at the end. <laughs> This is, I don't know if it's my favorite ice cream, but it's certainly the most curious. Well, there are other flavors, some based on roasted rice, but it's all Filipino flavor. Right. So all the ice creams here mm. are Filipino yes. flavors. Right. And they're all homemade, so yeah. Right, okay. Uh, Remember, we're a colony, so they have different versions of natilla everywhere from Argentina to Mexico. To and then put them together, you have bibinka, salted egg, custard, 
<laughs> a little a bink and a beer. A little caramel. Well, that was a delicious meal. <laughs> wow, we had a lot of food. It was <laughs> absolutely fantastic. What, what did we have? We had uh, nilasing na hipon or drunken crispy shrimps. We had uh, the crispy glazed oysters, Santa Ana. Crispy glazed oysters. We had the uh, clam uh, tinola with uh, pineapple. With pineapple. Uh, we had the piri piripig prawns. Those really big prawns. The cereal prawns. With the puffed rice. Yes. And then we had the uh, uh, crispy glazed bagoong or shrimp glazed pork. Uh, with the vegetables. Baked. Uh, big bangus, yeah, with the, the baked uh, fish with the crab cheese. fat and cheese. Yep, the cheese melted on top. Mm -hmm. Delicious. Creme brulee, uh, the the salabat. Yep, natilia. Okay, and so, so creme that's, brulee that's prog type. progressive Filipino. And then, and then we had the uh, salted, salted egg ice cream and the beer and pulutan ice cream. Yeah. The, the beer ice cream was definitely different. And this is a shaker coffee. Nice and cold. Yeah. Strong coffee with a little bit of sugar in it. Not a bad way to finish the meal. And you're having just what? An espresso. Just an espresso. <laughs> well, cheers. That was nice. Come on, Marshall, come on. We got cocktails. Stop shooting! We got cocktails in one of the islands. We're late. It's time to go. I've got to go. Jean's got the plane ready. So, uh, see you next time.